One of the most consumed supplements is probably whey protein. Almost everyone knows someone who has taken whey protein or is currently using it. It's not only used in the fitness industry, but also amongst dietitians and other sports. But why is this? It's cheaper when compared to other protein sources, it's very convenient to take after a workout and it's probably one of the best ways to get those extra proteins in. Now one of the most asked questions about protein powder is probably is it healthy? I know back in the day that my mother thought it was very harmful like it was some type of drug. Uh, so she didn't want me to use it. But that's simply not true. Luckily for us there have been countless of studies about protein and its effect on our health. And it's safe to say that you don't really have to worry about any negative downsides when you're taking protein powder unless you're allergic to diary, in which case you can still switch to plant-based protein. One of the biggest concerns is that it can damage your liver and your kidneys, but there has been no evidence that a high protein diet can cause damage to your liver and kidneys in healthy people. And now the funny thing is that the whey itself was even used back in the days by the ancient Greeks. The physician Hippocrates himself noticed that whey had some unknown health benefits. And after some time, people started using whey to cure their patients. This actually helped because, well, they didn't really consume that much protein back in the days and the whey itself contained a lot of protein and thus led to a more healthy body. But now we just have a more concentrated form of this whey in the form of a powder. So I think it's safe to say that you don't really have to worry about any negative side effects because whey itself was used by the ancient Greeks and it even helped them cure their patients. Now should you take protein powder? The short answer is it depends. There have been many studies around extra protein in your diet when it comes to weight loss or weight gain. But the problem with this is that it's mostly regarding protein and not protein powder. So the thing is that whole foods still beat supplements because there are still some things in whole foods that your body needs that you can't find in supplementation. Now we know that you should probably be consuming about 0.8 to 1.2 grams of protein per pound of body weight or 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. And if you're able to get that amount of protein out of your diet, I think you probably should should get it out of your diet and not out of your supplements. And ideally you should be getting that protein out of your diet but for most people their diet is just not enough. So then supplementing that extra amount of protein will help you to get you to your daily needs. But you should still look at protein powder as a supplement. Something that is able to help you to get to that required amount when you're unable to do so. Because supplements never should really replace whole foods. Now if you're for example a 180 pound person and you should consume about 180 grams of protein per day but you're only able to get 160 grams out of your diet you should supplement those extra 20 grams with protein powder the most important thing still is that you need to get enough protein so if it's necessary for you to get that out of your protein powder you need to do so now if you want to take protein powder it's very easy to get confused because there are so many options on the market now there are two main protein supplements on the market mainly casein and whey powder they are mostly the same but there are some key differences one of those differences is their digestion rate whey protein for example will be digested that way faster but will also get out of your bloodstream in about three hours. Casein however is digested much slower and will lead to a more spread out delivery of protein to your bloodstream. This protein from casein will stay in your bloodstream for about eight hours. Now there is also a big difference in the amount of the muscle building amino acid leucine. Whey generally has a higher content of leucine which should make it better in building muscle. But casein has more muscle preservation properties. Now a study has shown that whey comes out first when it comes to spiking your muscle protein synthesis, the process that is required to build muscle. So generally I would advise you to stick to whey protein but there is some other known benefit about casein that might cause you to reconsider what you're taking but this will be for later on in the video. Now there is even another difference in protein supplements which is whey isolate or whey concentrate. Now if you're lactose intolerant, whey isolate is probably the better option for you. This is because it contains way less milk sugar as opposed to whey concentrate. Other than that, there isn't really much difference. Concentrate is just less expensive 
and thus for most people the better option. But isolate is still the most pure form of protein, so if you have the money, you can buy this option as well. Now when it comes to plant-based protein versus whey and casein, whey and casein definitely come out on top. This is because, well, research shows that plant-based protein aren't as well ingested as just normal protein. Now, if you're vegan or lactose intolerant, you can just simply compensate this by ingesting more of that protein. But if you're able to just consume normal whey protein, I advise you stick with this. Smash the like button with your strong arms if you thought this video was helpful so far. Feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any tips. Now, another frequently asked question about protein powder is when should you take it? A lot of people believe that you should be taking your protein shake right after your workout because of the anabolic window. However, research doesn't really support this idea. For example, this paper shows that you don't really have to worry about when you take your protein shake as long as you've had a meal before your workout with sufficient protein. Studies show that the one hour anabolic window only applies to people who train in a fasted state. In fact, if you're training fasted, it's even better to drink your shake before your workout instead of after. A study showed that individuals who had a pre-workout shake when training in a fasted state had a much higher rate of muscle protein synthesis as opposed to the ones who had a post-workout shake. So to summarize, if you had a pre-workout meal with some protein in it, you don't really have to worry about when you should take your shake. But if you're training fasted, it's best to take your shake before you work out. However, most people just like to drink their shake after their workout because it's more convenient. For example, personally, I just like to drink my shake after a workout because for some weird reason, it just tastes better after a workout. Now, however, if you're consuming casein protein powder, it's best to take it before bed. This is because research shows that taking 40 grams of casein before bed helps increase muscle protein synthesis overnight and thus leads to greater recovery. Keep in mind that this does only count for casein and not for whey protein. This is because casein is ingested much slower and thus leads to a more spread out muscle protein synthesis. However, I don't really advise you to take a lot of water with the shake before you go to bed because this will cause you to wake up multiple times because you have to rush to the bathroom. Something to also keep in mind is that the sugar from the shake will actually decrease your sleep quality so it's best to look for an option which has a lesser amount of sugar. So generally I advise you to drink this casein about 2 hours before bed so you don't really have to rush to the bathroom. As for how much supplementation that you should be taking, it definitely depends on how much you eat. There are some studies that show a higher amount of protein supplementation is more beneficial but this is probably because the individuals from the study didn't consume enough protein to begin with. As I've said before, you just have to hit your daily needs. If this means you have to consume about 40 grams of supplementation, you have to consume 40 grams. If this means you only have to supplement 10 grams, you should supplement 10 grams. So if this means you have to take two shakes instead of one, you should be doing this. You just have to hit your daily target, but I wouldn't advise you take four protein shakes a day because, well, you still want to get a large amount of protein out of your whole foods. Now, as for what to take it with, it really doesn't matter that much for muscle growth, but it does depend on what your goals are. So, for example, if you're trying to lose weight, I don't really advise you to take it with milk because those will get you extra calories in that you don't really want. Instead, you should probably switch to almond milk or water for better results. But when you're trying to bulk up, I advise you to take this with full milk because, well, you really want those extra calories in to gain that weight. Like this video if you thought this was helpful and share it with your friends to help them. Subscribe if you want to see more helpful content like this and watch my other videos if you want to learn how you can get that Spartan physique and I'll see you guys later. Bye.